Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish. Got him. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> We're headed to the best ice fisheries from across the ice belt. We'll fish longer, punch more holes, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites on ice. Oh, that's... <laughs> what a specimen. Oh, look at the size of that. Look at that fish. <laughs> that is a monster bike. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Hey everyone, James Holst with In-Depth Outdoors, and on today's show, I'm fishing with Joel Nelson in central Minnesota, targeting big midwinter bluegills. And one of the things I love about time spent out on the ice chasing big bluegills is they're very difficult to catch consistently. Big bluegills are very finicky. It takes a very precise presentation to consistently put big bluegills on the ice. Small bluegills are a completely different story, but if you're an angler that wants to consistently ice nine and a half, 10, and even 11 inch bluegills, you're gonna have to have all your ducks in a row. So on today's show, we're gonna show you some presentations that we use to consistently catch big bluegills using soft plastics. So stick around, we're gonna put some big bluegills on ice today. There he is. Oh, big bluegill. <laughs> Look at that guy. That's why we get out of bed in the morning. That is a big, big, big bluegill. I'm never too old to have fun catching bluegills. Absolute slabber. You know, there's a lot of reasons uh, to release big bluegills. Um, and the one that I tell myself every time I let one like that go is, there's a lot of good luck coming to a fisherman every time he lets a 10 inch bluegill go. Um, I tell myself uh, every 10 inch bluegill, that's good for one five pound walleye. So uh, six 10 inch bluegills in a day, that's all adding up to the next time I get out on the ice to chase walleyes. And you know what, I, it's one of those deals that's like compound interest. It just keeps compounding upwards. You release those big walleyes, maybe it's a 20 pound pike. But uh, that's really what I tell myself. It's all about uh, the good mojo. You know, we're just starting out our day. Uh, we're finding some fish here and there, trying to develop a pattern, putting things together. You probably see I got a number of rods next to me on the ice. I'm always fishing with multiple rods when I start out a day. And a lot of times I'll continue that throughout the day. And the uh, main reason is we haven't got anything figured out yet. We're still trying to figure out what they're keying in on. And as soon as we do, we're gonna tie those things on those other rods as well. Oh, there we go. All right, oh, another eight inch gill so. Uh, we're probably gonna put this one back and move on to bigger and better things because you know what? I got a lot of faith that we could do better. Boy, they release so healthy. Uh, funny, a lot of times when anglers are fishing deeper water, they're afraid, uh, afraid that these bluegills won't release. As long as you take your time, bring them up nice and slow, don't get too uh, excited on the uh, hook set and reel up, a lot of times they release just fine. You know, a lot of times with bluegill fishing, it's all about the drop and trying to create the most natural and realistic fall on the bait as possible. And what I've got right here is I'm in about 20 feet of water and I've got fish bottom five, six feet or so. And what I'm doing is I'm letting out my line kind of in bursts right now, but right before it gets down to them, I let a whole bunch of line out and really let that line just fall nice and naturally down the hole. Wanna recreate as natural and realistic a drop as possible. I've got three, four fish on my mark them right now, but they're moving kind of quick. Fish in every hole, just gotta figure out what they want to eat today. Uh, one of the things that I do to help judge the fish I'm marking is how they move on screen. Bluegills are very deliberate. Small perch will dart up to a bait and then dart right back down. So that's one way without actually catching the fish to get a better idea what you're actually sitting over at the time. Of course, a guy can spend a lot of time unproductively fishing small perch if you think they're bluegill. You know, I love catching big perch. This lake is not known for perch. So if I get a really good idea that I'm on top of a bunch of small perch like this one, I'm gonna move. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> that is not what we're after. I'm gonna move. God, when I put them down, I had just a screen full. I'm not gonna waste my time fishing it if I know they're three inch perch. Oh my, give me a screen full of fish. 
There we go, I got something coming off bottom, but it's probably a perch. Yeah, there we go. You know, I think that's the, uh, the part of bluegill fishing that I really enjoy is that a good bluegill bite is actually pretty darn challenging. And this is a tanker. Oh my gosh, this is an absolute monster. Oh, wow. Palm sized fish, fish that fill your hands. And he absolutely slaughtered this bait. I don't know folks, there is something about a big gill. You know, fish like this, <laughs> they don't live in very many places. And where they do live, uh, they're typically very remote, hard to get to. Hey, let's face it, the easy fish have already been picked off, folks. So uh, a fish like this, uh, a gill that exceeds nine inches, and I haven't put this one to a tape yet, but this one is, is probably pushing 10 inches. It's at least a nine and a half or maybe nine and three quarters. Uh, we're approaching true one pound sunfish, and it's a reward in and of itself just to be able to catch it and release it. Oh. <laughs> so healthy, she released twice. She did a full twirly bird in the hole. <laughs> At Otter Outdoors, we're committed to building a tougher, stronger, smarter line of ice shelters. Tougher is our roto-molded sleds, known for their legendary strength and durability. Stronger is our anodized square tube frame, oversized and substantially stronger than round tubing. Smarter is our fully sewn and quilted insulated Pro Series and Wild Series thermal shells, and a complete line of smarter accessories. This winter, let Otter Outdoors unleash the tougher, stronger, smarter ice angler in you. I'm gonna guess it's a little pike or a little bass or something. If it's a bluegill, she is a dandy. You know, one thing about these big bluegills, they fight. I mean, they'll throw you. Oh, people, look at this. Just a giant. <laughs> like I said, uh, these big ones just fight. I was convinced I had a bass. That's all of a 10 inch bluegill. You can see that shrimp o jig head there. I'm fishing with a black custom jigs and spin plastic. It's a finesse plastic. Nothing simpler. What a fish. That's one of the things I just love about fishing plastics. The size of the fish you get is so much better in my experience in fishing live bait. You might not catch as many fish, but the ones you get they're trophies. You know, when we're talking catching bluegills like this, everybody refers to them as panfish, like their only value is in the pan. And I, I couldn't disagree with that more. Uh, yeah, they're great to eat, but really one of the things I love about fishing bluegills is it makes me a better ice fisherman. When we're talking about bluegills of the caliber, the one that I just released, that is an old fish. It's acclimated to its environment, uh, oftentimes for over a decade. They're that slow growing. And when I'm out here fishing bluegills, what I'm noticing is that I have to pay incredibly close attention to every interaction with every fish. I can't be sloppy in the least. And there really is very few fish that we'll run into out here on the ice that is as picky and uh, uh, absolutely focused on details as much as a bluegill will be. I make the wrong jig stroke, they're gone. If my color selection's off by the tiniest little bit, away they go. So this is a great training tool. And I've noticed that after a day of successful bluegill fishing, when I go back out as a walleye fisherman, I actually fish much better. I've learned through that previous day bluegill fishing to fish slowly, to pay very close attention to how each fish is reacting to my presentation. And that makes me a more successful walleye angler for that reason. What we're doing is we're switching back and forth between plastics and meat. And when I say meat, I mean bait of various types. Today we're talking spikes. We've got a bunch of red spikes. And uh, this nuclear ant from Custom Jigs and Spins is actually a nice complement to both because you can go ahead and tip it with spikes like I'm doing here, but it's also got these plastic kind of uh, wings and feelers to it, which uh, waver in the water and give it a real lifelike, bug-like action. And hey, let's, uh, let's face it, what we're trying to do is mimic the real thing. At times there's nothing more deadly than a wriggling spike just sitting there on the end of your hook going to town. Ooh, that one took it with some authority. I tell you what, Oh, he's not very big at all, but although the fish size isn't a, isn't a step in the right direction, the aggressiveness of this fish definitely is. That's what we're looking for. We've got a lot of holes with a lot of fish, but we don't necessarily have a lot of holes with active fish. And active fish is what it's gonna be all about today, folks. I've got fish suspended really high here. 
slowly drop down on them. These fish will almost always be aggressive. Oh, look at this one come. There he is. You need to see that rod tip dip. Look at here. Those suspended fish be crappy. Just about everything will eat those shrimpos. You find the right color, you find the right depth, they'll do the rest. Definitely not our target species, but uh, you know, I'll take every last fish that wants to bite. I won't be too picky. This winter, start seeing red. Visit MarkhamTech.com and this winter, start seeing red. Mind if I fish with you guys? No, but if you're using custom jigs and spins lures, you better get a bigger bucket. With custom jigs and spins, new tungsten heavy metal jigs, you'll get down to the big ones quickly and catch more and bigger fish. These jigs have been designed by world-renowned Croatian ice fisherman Czechai Matten. Czechai number one with Czechai lures fishing. Go Czechai, go! So when you use custom jigs and spins, try the new tungsten heavy metal ice jigs. Custom jigs and spins, the hottest bait below the ice. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Ah, oh, this is a big fish. You know, one of the one, <laughs> one of the wonderful things about getting real familiar with a flasher is when you see that big mark, the one that really stands out and it comes up and cracks the jig, you know it's gonna be something special. This is a big fish. Plus any bluegill that'll run the drag on you two, three times during a fight. Oh. I just love this. Whoo! Line caught on the ice, it actually scared me. Come here, buddy. Get out of my transducer there. It's gonna be crappy bluegill. Oh, this thing is a giant. Come here. Oh, look at that thing. Uh, today is an amazing, amazing day. You know, this doesn't happen very often. Um, I won't tell anybody that this is anything other than absolutely special to be out here icing fish of this caliber. For comparison, here's your standard 8 inch eater. Not a bad fish, I'll take those all day long. Look at the difference. It's just ridiculous. He's a pretty bass is what he is. Just an absolute pie plate. This is bordering on one of the best days of bluegill fishing I've ever had. You know, I'd bet lunch, that's a 10 inch fish, probably bigger. We've got about six, maybe seven foot of visibility here. So that bright colored jig head contrasted with that black body just seems to be the absolute magic ticket today. I want to show people all the variations and combinations I went through because I do have kind of a tackle box that I keep handy. So so I know what I fished with. Get that loose, gonna let him go. That's just awesome. Here's what I'm talking about. When I try a jig, doesn't produce, I put it in the cup holder for my transducer. So I've tried red, I've tried green, I've tried black in the normal style. You know, that's a, that's a horizontal jig that I was talking about earlier. Different colored shrimpos, diamond jigs, gill pills. I mean, I've tried live bait. How about some red Euro larva. That whole mess in my hand there are variations that we've tried that didn't produce. And once we found today's combination, man, I'm telling you what, the lights are on. Everybody's home. That's awesome. Oh, there we go. Folks, you saw how high I raised that rod and sometimes, oh, baby's fighting. Sometimes I, <laughs> I take some heat from folks. They say, well, do you really need to set the hook like that? And you know, Probably not, but oh, a fish like this, I'm not gonna take any chances with. Look at that fish, folks. But you do need to set the hook a little bit harder just to get down to that backbone. And that's the idea. From there, the rod will do the work for you. And this fish with its bright colors really puts the blue in bluegill. It's a big male. And folks, this is the fish that protects the fishery. These big males are the very fish that when spawn time comes, protect those nests and make sure that the bluegills of the future are gonna swim lively in this lake again. It is a prime candidate to be released, not just because of its huge size, but because of the fact that it is a male. If you're gonna keep some fish, 
keep some smaller fish, please, in these lakes. And females are actually the better fish to keep. It's completely different than a walleye or other species. You know, a walleye, you're talking about a fish that might have, be full of eggs if it's a female. But like I mentioned, these males, these are the ones that protect the fishery of the future because of how good they are as parents in protecting that nest. Hey, let's get this guy back. Whew, can't wait to go out and catch another one of those fish. I tell you what, if I don't catch another fish that big the rest of this winter, I'll still be happy. That's a monster gill. And just like that, they're gone. You know, that's why we punch holes so close together. When you're following a school of bluegills like this, just a five foot move might be enough to pick that school back up and let you know where it went. There he is. <laughs> hey man, if you can't have fun doing this, something's wrong. Check a pulse. If you've got a pulse, chances are you need a different sport. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. You know, when you're averaging nine and a half plus inch fish already this morning, two or three over 10, I'm telling you, that's a special, special day. And they are just woofing on that shrimp oak. <laughs> that's the kind of grin that won't go away for a while. What a fish. Come here, buddy. All right, gonna let that guy go. We gotta talk baits because it looks like we're out here just catching fish hand over fist with absolutely no problem. But the truth of the matter is, we've spent a lot of time refining what we're using. And uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of a shrimpo. This is a jig that hangs like this in the water, vertically. And what I'm using there is a black finesse plastics tail. And uh, a lot of guys will call those nails or spikes or you know wedges. Really all it is is just the thinnest filament of plastic that sticks out below that jig. The way I like to have it rigged is I want to have the tail facing like this. So when it's in the water, I want the tail facing kind of at a 90 degree angle. That way when I'm working that jig in the water, that tail just wags. These fish, once you find the right color combination, and really very often that's the key, getting the color right. Once you've got that right, these fish think it's a natural bait in the water and they find it almost irresistible. Since 1946, Strike Master has held to a simple idea. If you build an auger that makes less work out of drilling holes, people will have more fun ice fishing. Strike Master's two-stroke solo series provides unmatched cutting speed in a lightweight design. New this winter, Strike Master unveils their Honda-powered four-stroke auger. The Honda 35cc light tears up the ice with reliable Honda power. Strike Master Ice Augers. Visit us online today to find the Strike Master auger that's right for you. Back, come up like a bluegill. That guy was feisty. There we go. <laughs> Not a big gilly. I'd say probably about seven and a half inches. Let him go. You know, I talked earlier about uh, how much good luck it is to release a big bluegill. I'm saving up all my bluegill luck, dude, like compound interest in the bank. James has been kicking my tail around, but I've moved in on his spot and uh, now I'm using plastics as well. So we'll see if I can't turn it around. There we go. My bait bite, that hot one I had with the, uh, the nuclear ant and the spikes, that's all gone. Not a tanker, but uh, it's about an eight and a half, nine inch gill. And uh, so our bait bite has died and we've switched to plastics exclusively. I've actually got something called a wedgie on and it's a tiny little tail on this diamond jig and it flickers ever so slightly. And that's really been the ticket here. So James has been sticking it to me pretty good. Uh, this is about the only way I'm gonna get back at him. Well, I'm seeing more fish now in the last 15 minutes than I've seen in the last hour and a half, bud. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen real soon and it's probably gonna be fast and furious, huh? I hope so, because we don't have a lot of time. Have you checked your watch lately? 3.30? About 3.30, I'm guessing. Watch this, right here. Whoop, got him. <laughs> I don't know if I've got a gill or, or what. I don't know that I've ever heard a long sustained pull like that out of a bluegill. <laughs> Just that easy. <laughs> Look at that dandy. He's actually a little short compared to some of the fish we've had today, but I tell you what, that makes a big kid smile. This may be a day where I don't put a single fish on the ice to keep, and it could very well be my best day of bluegill fishing ever. Now, how about that? Most guys would judge their success based on how heavy is the bucket. But with these fish, 
it won't bother me one bit if I go home without putting a single fish on the table when they're all that quality. What a dandy. Thank you so much. Back he goes. You know, as long as the conditions don't change, I don't expect we're going to have to adjust our presentation whatsoever. You know, one of the biggest challenges we're facing right now is the wind that's picked up this afternoon. I mean, it's really howling. These fish want such a precise presentation that as we get the, uh, the fish to start chasing our baits and we start raising our rod tip to get those fish to work up under the bait, the wind starts to grab our line and it starts to parachute a little bit. And uh, the, the reason that's a problem we want that bait to rise and then fall back towards the fish, but the wind's grabbing it and actually keeping it from falling back down. Uh, we're having a hard time enticing the fish, so what we're doing to compensate, and this is something that everybody keep, needs to keep in mind when they find themselves in conditions like this, is shorten up the rod, get right down near the hole, and use your body to block the wind hitting that line. It's amazing the difference it makes when you're able to control that presentation. Again, there's a lot of species that will allow you to be a little bit sloppy from time to time, they'll still bite. A big bluegill just doesn't happen very often. They're just so picky about how they feed and when. Just a little wind on that line boogers the whole thing. This is where it starts to get interesting. I've got a fish following it up and the higher I get, I need to try to reel up and shorten the line so I can get that rod tip back down there. Nope. Definitely an example of got the rod tip up and when I tried to reel up some of that line so I could lower the rod tip, just didn't move right. He was gone. Oh, there we go. Boy, we are losing light, but we are not losing fish by any means. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if they're just getting bigger or if I'm just getting more excited as the bite keeps getting hotter and hotter. This has been just phenomenal. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to top this. I don't know where we go from here, but uh, it's been a blast either way. Here you go, girl. Woo! Ah, uh, I'm just gonna drop it back down through the school. I don't know why that works. It just does. You get some fish that hold up. They follow the jig up and they, they don't eat it and you drop that jig right down through them, oh, bring it back it up again, you're gonna get one to eat. Just another big fish. <laughs> you know it's been a good day, James, when uh, you've got 40 degree temps and you're freezing cold because you're wet, slimy, and chilled to the bone. I come over to show off a little bit. Oh, How's that, that one look? That one's bigger, I believe. <laughs> I'm worn out. <laughs> There is just this intense satisfaction. I'm going to say this is the best trophy bluegill fishing I've ever had. Yeah. I, <laughs> Public waters, people all around us all day long, wheelers, trucks, and just catching the heck out of bluegills. Yeah. Like we've said, we can remember at times catching bigger fish maybe, but never the numbers of no, continuous no. big fish parade this size. It's just wild. With that, I think we're going to call it a day. Yeah. Let's We'll have just enough daylight to get back off the ice. We'll let these guys go. What do you think? Yeah, mine first. <laughs> and we're out. Well, thanks for tuning in. And as you saw today, uh, you know, there is no magic presentation, particularly for big bluegills like this. For me, the trick to consistently icing these big bluegills was experimentation and refinement of jig color and body color. Once I had that figured out, the bluegills came fast and furious. So keep that in mind the next time you're out there on the ice, constantly be changing up patterns and jig head colors. When you find the right color, it's game on. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.